Making a sharp turn, I heard last night you compared Putin to Hitler and the West leaders to Chamberlain. Want to expand on that? Look, uh, on what part? <laughs> so where do we start? I don't know. So no, is he going to invade the, no, Germany? I've been, I mean, I've been saying it for quite a while, so because it started with me comparing Sochi Olympics. Yeah, it was Berlin 1936. And I, just a year ago, I just remember people almost jumping in their chairs saying it's just, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's ridiculous, you know, comparing Putin to an absolute evil. And my response was, yes, but Adolf Hitler, it's not, you know, it's when I, when I said, you know, Putin looked like him, it's not Hitler from history books. Because it's not Hitler 45, 44, 43, 44. What about Hitler 1936? How about reading London Times or Le Monde or Toronto Star or New York Times? What they wrote about Adolf Hitler in 1936 and compared what they're writing about Putin. Because the problem with people, or with this, with this evil minds like Hitler or Putin is that they're not born being as bad because they definitely, it's there, in, it's inside. But for them to sort of exploit the evil that, that is sitting inside, they needed support from the outside world. They needed time and also the arrogance uh, is growing with indecisiveness and weakness shown by, by the opposition. So everybody knows that, you know, that's from history books, from the memoirs, Winston Churchill, others that Hitler in 1935 or 1936 could have, could have been stopped at a much, much uh, uh, lower cost. Maybe we could have avoided the horrors of the World War II if instead of sending delegations to uh, Berlin Olympics, the France and England send their troops to support the Republican government in Spain. Where, you know, German planes have already, were already bombing Spanish cities for one month with Italian troops on the ground. And, you know, you could see what the, the, the French team marching you know, in front of the Führer with a salute. Then the French press explained it was an Olympic salute. It's a 10, 10 degrees difference. So this is the, yeah, <laughs> fine, nice. So this is the, it's, and it's, it's, I think this is, it was something, you know, um, uh, it's not evil, but there's this some form of energy that could feed the dictator who could see the, you know, this parade, you know, just being, praised by the world as the leader of the nation who is receiving the Olympics. And I, I believe that 96 Olympics, you know, they boosted uh, Hitler's confidence. Uh, it took for him 20 months to, for, for Anschluss of Austria. It took Putin only 20 days to Anschluss Crimea. So that's the it's acceleration. Um, and, um, you know, it's, uh, it's also, I, I was invited it just, it was, uh, um, to be one of the uh, speakers at the um, centennial anniversary of Alan Turing and uh, was honored to open a plaque in, in the University of Manchester, so in uh, 2012. So, um, and it was an amazing moment, you know, just I was there on, the, on June 23rd, so there was a ceremony, that's day, you know, that's, that's when he could be 100, uh, that was his birthday, and, uh, and the city was celebrating, but of course not, you know, who cares about Alan Turing, the man who probably was one, made one of the greatest contributions to win the war by cracking German enigma. They were celebrating the, the rally of Olympic torch entering, entering Manchester. I said, what an, I said, what an irony. Because the whole ceremony was invented by Dr. Goebbels. You just go and read in the, book, in, 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 in the books. The entire ceremony of, Olympic, of the opening of the Games was a German invention. It's 1936, first time where they did it. And the Nazis had the special affection with, with the torches, with, with the flames. And, you know, it's just celebrating something that was invented by Nazis, you know, at the, at the day when the, one of the greatest minds in this country was born and made a, the man who made a contribution to defeat this, this, this evil. So, by the way, there's something also very ironic about Olympic Games. That is very few people actually remember that next Olympic Games, because in 1936 they made them, they, they, they had to they choose the next venue. And what was the next venue? Anybody in the hall knows what was the next venue? Tokyo just to understand, and 1944 Rome. So that's, that just gives an idea about, you know, who controlled the Olympics at that time. Now, going back to Sochi, so I could feel that for Putin it would be, you know, sort of a big boost of his ambitions. Uh, and, um, you know, it did happen. Um, and uh, today, you know, when you look at the Putin's record, I mean, it's, it's as dangerous as Hitler's, but I think it could be even worse because Hitler, God forbid, never had his hands on nuclear weapons. Anybody has doubt that he would have used it? Now, Putin does have 
access to nuclear weapon. And uh, every day we hear today, we hear on Russian television, Putin is Russia, Russia is Putin, and there's no future of Russia without Putin. So it's an exact replica of what Rudolf Hess said 80 years ago. Deutschland is Hitler, is, is Führer, Führer is Deutschland. So uh, we are facing someone who is definitely crazy, who believes that he is a form of the Russian messiah, who is there to rebuild the Russian empire. And you know, at a certain point, if he feels that he is just going down the tubes, he is losing ground, he can do whatever. And, uh, on but but let, me, let me just push back on that. I mean, whatever can he do? I mean, can he invade Germany? I mean, what exactly are you Look, saying? Look, you know, it's this, it's, it started with invading Georgia four years, eight, 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 six years ago. Now he invaded part of the Ukraine. It's, you know, first time since 1945. No, I don't First wanna, time. This right. is important. Now, the entire system of European security was based on the fact that, you know, territories, you know, were protected by, by international treaties. He ignored treaties. He uh, took part of the Ukraine. Now he invaded part of the eastern Ukraine. Now, he stopped because the, the cost was too high, and moving further into Ukrainian territory could, you know, could cost him, you know, thousands and thousands of, of uh, lives of Russian soldiers, and that m might be unacceptable uh, uh, for, even for Russian public, even with the 24-7 propaganda. But uh, he is not hiding his plans. He talks about every country in the former Soviet Union as a potential target for his plans to rebuild Russian empire. Why would he, if he conquered all of Ukraine, I mean, that wouldn't be very good economically, would it? I mean, that they're poorer than Russia, and wh no, but what would the, he get okay, from that? Okay, you are, you know, again, this is, this, I think it's a big mistake, because you're trying to judge him from the positions uh -huh. of the elected leader. So it's the, he's in power for 15 years. You know, uh, if you stay in power for so long, and it's, it's no democracy, so you just have to always come up with new mythology, you know, to support your claim to power. Uh, as you know, Russian economy is no longer offering Putin any excuse, and uh, it's not going to improve. And I think he's... That's a big it, trouble. It's, it's a big yes. And uh, the oil prices will never reach, you know, the level of 2007, 2008. Okay, never say never, but I think it's un highly unlikely. So it's, and uh, uh, Putin badly needs something else to offer, to, to sell to the Russian public. He's there for 15 they years. Get, they get half their government revenues from oil. Exactly, or but like that. That, yeah. that's why he, you know, he has no other choice but to replace you know, economy, to replace uh, uh, improvements of the living standards of middle class by this nationalist, nationalistic rhetoric and by uh, uh, aggressive foreign policy. Invasion becomes the only domestic propaganda tool to convince the public that Putin is indispensable. What else he has? So that's why, you know, worsening economic situation in Russia might push him uh, further in, into, into this aggressive, aggressive mood. But not all the Russian invasions have worked out so well in recent years. I mean, Chechnya, well, Afghanistan. Well. Oh, yeah, it didn't, didn't work well. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and you go, but, go into some no, of the Asian no republics. No invasion worked well. So that's this, this you know, what, what... Well, I mean, it's not a... But, the, but again, it's, 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 uh, every dictator you know, eventually failed, but it's, it's not about them failing. We know, we know the outcome. It's about the cost that, that we're all going to pay for being so passive and, and, and so skeptical about their uh, evil intentions. So you were just in the Ukraine, I gather? You were no, I don't think he'll stop in Ukraine. No, I think well, he'll just, he, he has no choice. He'll move. There are many targets. The, in the south, you have Azerbaijan, Georgia. You have uh, potential provocations in Estonia and Latvia. NATO, NATO members, but he doesn't have to bring troops there. He's, don't forget, he's a KGB guy. So they could, they could use ethnic Russian communities uh, on the border with Russia to sort of create a havoc. And if NATO is, is indecisive, uh, because all decisions to be made, in, you know, as a consensus, that will demonstrate to everybody that NATO is a paper tiger. Reclaiming the former <laughs> Soviet Union. It's, it's not then... so much. I think it's, it's his goal is, is, is to um, ruin the system of, 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 of global security because he needs muddy waters you know, to survive. Uh, with, again, with oil prices being so low, uh, he doesn't have the same power you know, just to buy lobbyists around the world and to support all these terrorist networks. So he, he needs... He needs now uh, a, a, new, a new game. The game where you know, just the, the, the rules can be dictated by the military strengths, not by the economy or by the political uh, uh, 
alliances. I guess how, I mean, I remember seeing a movie recently about the, a few years ago, I think it's actually a Russian movie about the, the siege of Stalingrad, of Leningrad. No, Stalingrad or Leningrad? Uh, this, this, this Le Le Leningrad. Leningrad, the siege of Leningrad. And um, what was sort of amazing, at least how they depicted it, was the risk the German soldiers would take, the lot, that what they were, you know, attacking where they would surely get killed and going hand to hand. Of obviously, you know, the Russian citizens took great losses, but I can't. The Russians today are much better off than Germans were in the you know early 1940s. And some of those German soldiers, they're more informed. I mean, could you really push them to just do wholesale invasions when it's not working? Ooh, it's the as as we just uh, quickly talked before before coming to stage is that it's amazing to see what the 24-7 propaganda can do even uh, for the minds of people who have access to the internet. It's the propaganda in Russia today, it's, I mean, I, I, my mother still, still lives in Moscow and I talk to her every day and she says, it's, okay, it's, it doesn't work for her, but she says it's very difficult to resist. And uh, many of our friends, you know, they, they fall victims of the propaganda because you can't imagine people lying in, with every word. It's 100%. It's like, it's not even Dr. Goebbels, it's oral, you know? It's just slavery is freedom, uh, war is peace, black is white. So just it's all, it's a lie, lie, and lie. So they just don't, they don't care. So it's, it's quite amazing that, you know, this is they, they keep talking about Ukraine as being, you know, terrorized by fascists, by Russians being in trouble. I came from Kiev, you know, so this, the most popular TV shows in Ukraine are in Russian. So that's, it's, it's a fact. So most of the Ukrainians, they speak perfect Russian. And uh, what's happened is that, this is also quite a sad irony, that Putin eventually created Ukrainian nations, forcing many Russians, ethnic Russians, to become Ukrainians because they, they want to protect their freedom. It's no longer about ethnicity, it's about, you know, protecting their livelihood. And they, they understand now that you know, Putin's troops bring you not freedom, not liberation, but it's just an, it's, 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 it's a new form of slavery. So you still, go, you still go to Russia or never anymore? No, I can fly back. It will be a one-way ticket. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't worry about them hunting you down and giving you Look, plutonium not, or hopefully something? Hopefully not here. There are, there are many Russians in this town but uh, I don't think that uh, they have the same, the same freedom of action as in Moscow. At what point did you think you just, because you were there for the Pussy Riot, right? You, yeah, you were actually, protest. yeah. So I how, was what, arrested what, what a few was... times there. Um, oh, it's, you know, it's about a you know, risk assessment. So I, I stayed there for, for a long time, few arrests, you know, I knew it was d dangerous. Um, but, you know, I believe that at, up to a certain point, um, you know, they wouldn't probably go that far. You got, I, I, I vaguely remember seeing some tape during the protests after Pussy Riot where you got pretty violently arrested, right? Yeah, violently arrested, yes. Uh, um, you got like, you know, very violently handled, very violent, yes, thrown yes. into it. It was a physical contact, yes. Yeah. So just, just, <laughs> yes, with, with riot police, yes. Yeah, so, but pretty, pretty yeah. violent. I mean, it looked pretty violent. Uh, yeah, and, uh, um, you know. Uh, Although you were accused of beating them, right? Biting them. Biting them. Yes, this is actually, no, it was quite serious, you know. It's, it's, it sounds ridiculous, but you can end up in, in, in jail because you attacked, you know, man in, man in uniform. Because in Putin's Russia, and that started even, you know, it's seven or eight years ago, which I still call by modern standards vegetarian time. <laughs> because at that time you can end up, you know, in prison for five or ten days. Now it will be five to ten years. And, uh, uh, and what saved me that, you know, that's, you know, this, this moment, every second of this conflict, at 20 seconds, they have been shot from very different angles. So in a video, you can actually show everything. That even technically, you know, even if I was, you know, the a vampire, I couldn't use my teeth, you know, by being beaten, you know, by a bunch of these police officers. So, uh, okay, it's, it's, it sounds fun to that actually but carried I, I was, it was that not funny. carried weight in a Russian court? They couldn't prove you did it? They no, cared. but it's this, it's again, everybody could see it. And they, at that time, they, they, they worried about reputation because they had this pussy riot and they put them in jail and they didn't want another scandal. So that's why it died, it 
it died down. But later on, and they, when they started, you know, uh, political trials, and you know, I was out of the country, and uh, they called my mother saying they said they would like to see me Russian investigative committee, which has been doing all these political uh, investigations, and and they wanted to see me as a witness on one of the numerous cases there. So. I called my friends, I said, Gary, the rule is you enter the building as a witness, and if you leave the building, most likely as a suspect. So I said, fine, thank you. So that's the, it was just too much. So just taking this chance, it was 2013, uh, early March, I decided I had enough. 